Um, welcome to this detailed walkthrough of the DB Retirement Process webinar. I'm Andrew Smith, and I'm a Benefit Education Specialist with MERS, and I'll be your presenter today. During this Quick Bite webinar, we'll review the components of the MERS Defined Benefit Plan, talk about the retirement process, and highlight a few of the key things you'll want to be aware of in retirement. At the conclusion of today's webinar, you'll be directed to a quick six-question survey. Please take a moment to fill that out so we can use your feedback to improve future webinars. Just a few reminders before we get started today. Throughout the presentation, you can submit questions by clicking on the question mark at the top of your screen. If you have personal questions related to your plan, I suggest you contact our service center by calling 1-800-767-6377, as I will not be able to answer those questions during the webinar. And if we're unable to address any of your questions today, we will follow up with you to make sure you receive an answer. With that said, we'll get started with um, the webinar today. So first off, if you're not too familiar with MERS as an organization, MERS is an independent professional retirement uh, services company. We've, we were created over 75 years ago to administer retirement plans for local governments in the state of Michigan on a not-for-profit basis. And we still work um, only in the state of Michigan and only with local governments, uh, but we've grown to over 100,000 participants like you, um, and so you get kind of the best of both worlds uh, between a large established pension fund, uh, but also the local control and each um, each independent uh, municipality designs their own plan uh, to meet the needs of their employees. On the agenda today, uh, after today's meeting, you'll have a better understanding of your MERS defined benefit plan, as well as the formula that will be used to calculate everyone's individual retirement benefit. We'll talk about the importance of beneficiaries and how you can select and change your, your three beneficiary designations. Uh, we'll walk through the process to apply for retirement, and we'll also share some uh, Social Security and uh, Medicare resources with you as well. If you have not created uh, your online account at the MERS website, MERSofMich.com, we really encourage you uh, to, to do that. Um, if you've created an account in the past and are not sure of your uh, password, the easiest way to get that reset would be to call the service center and have them reset it in just a few minutes. But uh, an account on the MERS website gives you access to all of our tools and resources. You can run a benefit estimate and, um, and take advantage of, of many of our other free tools that we provide to all of our participants. So if you uh, go to the MERS of Mish website, and click on the login button or the, the uh, first time user link uh, just below the login button, that'll get you started. Um, but we'll get into the nuts and bolts of your defined benefit plan. First things first, it's important to understand that a couple things make a defined benefit plan unique among retirement plans. So they're, they work quite a bit differently from other types of retirement plans that you may be familiar with. Number one, uh, a defined benefit plan is designed to provide a lifetime stream of income in retirement, as long as you're vested in your plan. And the vesting is the required of, amount of service that you must earn to receive a benefit. Uh, that ranges in most plans from six years to 10 years. But once you're vested in the plan, as I'm sure uh, most of you are, uh, you're entitled to that lifetime benefit. It's guaranteed and protected by the Michigan Constitution. Uh, the other thing that makes a defined benefit plan unique is that the value of the benefit to each individual participant doesn't fluctuate based on the ups and downs in the stock market or other investment markets. Um, even though uh, you are using the power of those markets uh, to help fund your, your benefits, you're, not, um, you're, you're protected from the risk of a downturn at the wrong time, which in other types of retirement plans might, might uh, cause some, some issues. Uh, but with a defined benefit plan, uh, since your benefits are based on the benefit formula, a downturn in the investment market won't affect your uh, benefits. Uh, generally, defined benefit plans are funded by a combination of employee and employer contributions. You may be in a plan where your employer pays the entire cost of the defined benefit plan. Um, however, keep in mind that if you are in a plan that requires uh, employee contributions, 
uh, you're always 100% vested in those employee contributions. So if you were to leave employment prior to reaching the vesting uh, requirement for your plan and you aren't able to draw a lifetime benefit, you would still have the ability to take a refund of your member contributions. But keep in mind that, that uh, requesting that refund of member contributions does mean that you would lose all of your service credit that you'd earned towards that vesting requirement under the plan. So you wouldn't want to do that until you were sure that you weren't going to work anymore with uh, either your current employer or another MERS employer in the state. Now, I mentioned the defined benefit formula earlier. This is probably familiar to many of you, but it's important to, to have a good uh, sense of how your benefits will be calculated. So we'll go through the defined benefit formula for you today. Um, it's a three-part formula that includes your final average compensation times your years and months of service credit times the benefit multiplier, which is uh, determined uh, between negotiations between you and your employer. And that's how we, we calculate your annual benefit. To go a little bit deeper into each one of those components, we'll start with final average compensation. That's an average of the highest consecutive wages earned over a period of time. Uh, normally, the final average compensation period is either a three-year or a five-year period that we're looking at to calculate your FAC. Um, while for most people that final average compensation period will come at the end of your career, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. So we'll always look throughout your entire work history to find either the 36 or 60 consecutive months where your wages were the highest. And you can actually monitor through um, our website, you can see all of your monthly wages that have been reported for your whole work history and it'll highlight in green those months that are being used to calculate your FAC. So you can always keep track of how that's being calculated. The next component is service credit, and that's fairly straightforward. You earn a month of service credit for every calendar month in which you meet your employer's minimum definition for a month of service. Um, a standard definition in the MERS system is 10 working days in the month or 10 eight-hour days that you work in the month, um, but you'd want to check with your employer if you're not sure of your uh, specific plan's minimum requirement for a month of service credit. But generally, if you're working during that month, um, unless it was a partial month because you, you hired in um, sometime during the middle of the calendar month, uh, generally, if you're working, you're earning service credit for that calendar month. The final component of the benefit formula is your benefit multiplier, which is a percentage adopted by your employer for each division under the plan. And those multipliers, standard multipliers in our system, range from 1% up to a high of 2.5%. Um, but keep in mind, if you have one of those higher multipliers uh, above 2%, then you may uh, trigger a maximum benefit of 80% of your final average compensation. Um, so, so, for instance, if you have a 2.5% benefit multiplier, after 32 years of service credit, you would reach that benefit maximum, and at that point, your, your uh, individual benefit would simply be calculated as 80% of whatever your final average compensation was at retirement. The next important topic that we'll touch on is your beneficiaries. And um, it is a, a particularly important topic because these are the people that may have a claim to a portion of your benefit if anything were to happen to you and you pass away prior to retirement age and being able to draw that, that benefit. When we get later on in the presentation, we'll talk about the different payment options that you can choose from at retirement. And some of these, uh, the beneficiary designations will change a little bit when we, when we start to speak to what happens when you're actually on the, the pension. But while you're working, it's important to name your beneficiaries just in the event that something were to happen to you before you're, you're old enough to uh, draw that retirement benefit. So we'll go through each one of these beneficiary designations and help you understand uh, the different circumstances that would lead to each of these beneficiaries becoming, uh, coming into play. 
So the first and the most important beneficiary for most MERS participants is going to be the survivor beneficiary, because that is the one person that you're able to name who would be eligible for a lifetime benefit um, in the event that you passed away prior to drawing the retirement benefit. Um, so again, that needs to be one living person that you name as your survivor beneficiary. If you are married, then your spouse by default would be your survivor beneficiary and they would have to sign off on the form if you were to name anyone else as your survivor beneficiary. But you also have the ability to name both a primary and a contingent beneficiary. Now, just like with the survivor beneficiary, if you are married, then your primary beneficiary uh, is by default going to be your spouse. But again, if they sign off on the form, you would be able to name additional primary beneficiaries or name someone else to that designation, but only if your spouse signed off on the beneficiary form. Now, your primary and contingent beneficiaries would only come into play if there's a refund of your member contributions that's due to you and, and you and your survivor beneficiary are, are no longer uh, living. In that event, then your primary beneficiary would be the first person in line to receive that refund of your member contributions. And the contingent beneficiaries would only come into play if all of your primary beneficiaries had passed away as well. So for instance, if you had multiple children and you wanted them to have equal status to, to claim a benefit, or you wanted them to, to equally split any benefit that was due to them, you would wanna make them both the same designation rather than making one primary and one contingent. And we'll come back to the, the concept of these beneficiaries again when we, when we get to payment options in just a little bit, because some of the factors change just a little bit once you apply for retirement and are actually drawing that benefit. Now, if you're not sure who you currently have named as your beneficiaries, you can log on to the MyMERS portal through our website and uh, click on the beneficiary tab at the top of the page and it'll show you all of your currently named beneficiaries with the beneficiary type listed on the right side of the page. From that page on the portal, you will also have a link to the form that you would need to fill out if you do uh, want to make any changes to your beneficiaries. Now, getting to the, the real heart of the topic that we are here to discuss, which is retirement and that uh, application process to apply for your pension benefits. You are eligible to receive full pension benefits once you meet both the age and service requirements defined by your employer. Normal retirement age in the MERS system can range from age 60 to 70, as long as you're vested, but the vast majority of plans have age 60 set as a normal retirement age for their plans. Now, you may be in a MERS plan that has an early retirement option. Um, the most common of which would be an F55 benefit, which entitles you to retire with full pension benefits at age 55, as long as you also meet the service credit requirements, generally either 20, 25, or 30 years of service credit is required um, for those early retirement provisions. Now, in addition to those plans that have a special provision for early retirement with no reduction, there's also the option on all MERS plans to receive reduced retirement benefits. If you're within five years of your full retirement age, uh, you are able to request early reduced pension benefits, but it, it does come at a fairly significant cost. So it would be, it's the same uh, formula that's used to, to calculate the reduction in your social security payments if you draw those before your full retirement age. So it's a half percent reduction per month early that you draw the, the distribution if you do uh, opt for the reduced, uh, early reduced retirement benefits. So it's really only something that you'd wanna consider if there's extenuating circumstances that really necessitate leaving employment at that, at that time and drawing that benefit immediately. You always have the option um, if you're vested in your plan, uh, but you're not yet at your full retirement age, you could always uh, stop working and be in what's called vested deferred status, where you would still be eligible to draw at your full retirement age, your full unreduced 
pension benefits, even if you don't work all the way up until that, that age. Now, one of the most important topics that we'll talk about today is your pension payment options. Because one of the nice things about a defined benefit plan is that a lot of the decision making over the course of your career is taken care of for you. You don't need to pick and choose different investments with your defined benefit plan or things like that. But when you do apply for the retirement benefit, uh, there is one fairly impactful decision that you'll make on your retirement application, and that is choosing your payment option. And it's really about matching your situation with the payment option that makes the most sense for you. Um, so we'll go through the different options on your retirement application. There's actually eight different options to choose from, but they really break down into three different categories. And so we'll go through those three categories for you now. The first is the straight life payment option. And that's always going to be the highest benefit um, option available to you at retirement because it's taken directly out of the benefit formula that we mentioned earlier with no other calculations or reductions. Um, with the straight life payment option, though, you're making it a lifetime benefit for you as the participant. But then when you pass away, no additional benefits would go on to other beneficiaries. The next set of options, life with 175 or 50% to your survivor beneficiary, uh, those allow you to name one survivor beneficiary who would also be eligible for a lifetime benefit, meaning that once you, if you pass away, your survivor beneficiary would then continue to receive those pension payments each month. With the 100% to survivor, your survivor beneficiaries uh, pension payments would be the exact same payments that you had been receiving while you were living. You also have the option to choose either 75 or 50% to survivor, which would mean your payments while you're living would be a bit higher than they would if you chose 100% to survivor. But then after you pass away, your survivor beneficiary would then receive either 75 or 50% of that amount in their monthly payments. With all of those survivor payment options, you do have to name your one survivor beneficiary um, at retirement. And uh, after that point, that would lock in place. So you wouldn't have the ability to, to change that survivor beneficiary or to change your payment option after that point. Um, now, if your survivor beneficiary were to predecease you, if they pass away before you do, then you would simply need to notify MERS that your survivor beneficiary had passed away and from that point forward, you would uh, have your pension payment increased to the straight life payment amount for the rest of your life. But you wouldn't be able to name a new survivor beneficiary at that point. Now, the final set of options for your pension payment options is life with either a 5, 10, 15, or 20 year certain period. And this option gives you a bit more flexibility when it comes to naming your beneficiary. Because in this circumstance, it's still a lifetime benefit for you as the participant. But if you pass away any time within your certain period, whether that be 5, 10, 15, or 20 years, then your pension payments would continue to the beneficiaries that you chose for the remainder of that certain period. Um, another uh, advantage of that those payment options is the uh, age of your beneficiaries does not come into play when it comes to calculating those benefits. So with the survivor payment options, because we will be paying those, those uh, lifetime benefits to your survivor beneficiary, the age of your survivor beneficiary comes into play when we're calculating the cost of those payment options. So to give you an idea, if your spouse is about the same age as you and you choose life with 100% to survivor, Generally, it's about a 10 to 12% reduction from your straight life amount that you would receive if you chose the 100% to survivor. With the period certain options, though, your, the age of your survivor beneficiary would not come into play. Um, so just to walk through an example, this is Jane. Uh, she's retiring from the fictional City of Tree with a final average compensation of $45,000 a year. 
She's worked there for 25 years and her benefit multiplier is 2.25%. She's married with one child and Jane wants to know what her pension payment options would be. And so she used our online calculator, the DB calculator, to uh, calculate a benefit estimate for her. And once she went, she input her factors, this is the, uh, the information that she found through the calculator. It breaks down all of her different payment options as well as uh, the, the monthly payments that she'd receive uh, in the event that she chose any of those different payment options. So you can kind of see how for a normal set of circumstances like Jane's, um, what those uh, uh, different payment options would look like. But if you want to see a customized uh, benefit estimate that's unique to your situation and your plan, you can use that DB calculator to run uh, a similar projection. Now, a, a question that often comes up when we're discussing um, applying for retirement is when is the best time to retire? And from MERS perspective, you really have a lot of flexibility when it comes to choosing when you wish to retire. But one, one thing that uh, you will wanna keep in mind is that MERS credits your service credit based on the calendar month. And your retirement date for, from MERS perspective will always be the first day of the month following your last month of work. So what that means is it's in your best interest um, to work throughout that final month of work so that you can receive the, the additional service credit for that final month of work and, re and uh, limit the amount of time between your last day of work and your first pension payment. Uh, so in Jane's situation, she knows she wants to retire um, starting in October of 2018. So she chooses September 21st as her last day of work. That gives her enough time in September to earn that final month of service credit. Then her retirement date would be October 1st of 2018, and she'd receive that first pension payment on the 18th of October. And then uh, that pension payment would continue to come on the 18th of each month after that. Now let's walk through the steps you'll wanna to take to apply for retirement. The first step is to fill out your MERS application for a defined benefit retirement. You can find this uh, form at the MERS website or get that from your employer. Um, and you will wanna fill out this application between 45 to 90 days prior to your desired retirement date. That gives MERS the time to process your application. We may audit your account and, and we will uh, double check all of those numbers that have been submitted to us over the course of your career. So we may uh, double check with your employer to make sure we have all the most accurate information. And then generally about two weeks prior to your intended retirement date, you'll receive a preliminary benefit calculation. And that is going to look very similar to a, a, a benefit estimate that you may print out on your own, but the difference is it's going to be uh, stamped by one of our retirement analysts saying that it's, it's been audited and this is our certification to you, that this is the minimum you can expect to receive in retirement. The reason that I say it's the minimum you, you should expect to receive is because um, at that point, remember, you'll still have a few weeks of work left. So we won't have your very final wage information input into our system when you receive uh, that preliminary estimate. So your first pension payment will be based on that preliminary estimate that we make before we have those final wage numbers. But if there's any uh, additional benefit uh, due to you, if, if your last wage reporting bumps up your final average compensation at all, or, or anything else that would benefit you, we'll go back and recalculate, and then by your second or third pension payment, you'll receive that increased payment, and, and you'll get a, a separate payment for the difference um, between your first and uh, second or third pension payments. Uh, so at that point, you'll know going forward exactly how much that, that pension payment will be uh, for the rest of your life. Receiving your benefit in retirement, once your reporter, or your employer has reported your final wage and service information, will recalculate that benefit and make that one-time retroactive adjustment. Uh, but as I mentioned before, those funds will be direct deposited into the bank account you, um, you choose on your retirement application on the 18th each month. Or if the 18th falls on a weekend or a holiday, you receive those funds the prior business day. 
Living in retirement, a few things will change about your relationship with MERS once you're in retirement. Uh, currently, you're receiving a um, annual statement from MERS. Once you're in retirement, you will start to receive quarterly statements with all of the tax withholding information. Um, and do keep in mind that there will be, still be some taxes to be paid in retirement. So we will withhold the 4.25% Michigan income tax if you're living in Michigan. Um, and we will uh, also withhold your federal income tax based on the information you give us on your retirement application. Then each January, you'll receive a 1099-R from MERS, um, which essentially replaces your W-2 and has all your tax withholding information on it. If you're planning to continue to work in retirement, there are no restrictions at all relating to your MERS pension. If you decide to return to work, uh, there's no limit to the amount of hours or the amount of earnings you can, you can receive um, as long as you're not working for the same employer that you're retired from. If you do uh, retire and then later decide to return to the same employer you're retired from, there are some restrictions that would affect your MERS pension. You'd have to have at least a 60-day bona fide separation from employment, and then you'd be limited to 1,000 hours in a calendar year um, moving forward. So that comes out to about 20 hours a week. Um, also, any... Um, any uh, uh, when you decide to receive your Social Security benefits, that won't impact your MERS pension at all either. I just uh, saw a question come up on the screen asking, um, with the certain period payment options that we went through earlier, are you able to name multiple beneficiaries? And the answer to that is yes. So that, that certain period, the third set of payment options, um, does give you the ability uh, to name multiple beneficiaries because they would be able to uh, equally split those remaining pension payments if you were to pass away uh, within that certain period. So yes, you can name multiple beneficiaries as well as changing those beneficiaries even after you're retired. Um, another question that we had come up was, will there be access to view this presentation and the slides after the webinar is over? And yes, we will post uh, the, the webinar with the audio as well as the slides um, as soon as possible after the webinar is complete. Another question that came up, what happens if you return to work for the same employer but are not paid by the municipality but rather are a contractor that was hired by the municipality? Um, is there still the restriction? And in general, as long as there's a bona fide separation from employment and no prearrangement, um, that would still be allowable and there wouldn't be that hours restriction if they are considered by the municipality a non-municipality um, non worker. So if they're, if they're a contract employee outside, um, they're being paid by a, a third party, then, then those restrictions that I mentioned earlier would not um, apply. Um, and then another similar question came up, working for a different department, but in the same city. All of those restrictions that I mentioned earlier on working in retirement, they would apply as if you're in the same organization, the same municipality in the MERS system. So in general, uh, different departments are still considered part of that same municipality. But there are uh, certain situations where um, a particular um, a particular office of a larger government, like a county government, may be qualified to be their own municipality. So you may want to double check with your employer to see if that might be the case. Um, but, but in general, if it's the same municipality that you're working with, then, then those restrictions would apply. Now, some resources that can help you in your planning stages for, for uh, deciding when you, you may uh, start to apply for the MERS defined benefit um, uh, payments. Uh, we've attached two handouts. Uh, first, the Understanding the MERS Defined Benefit Retirement Process, which is a great reference, which shares a lot of the information that we've provided today, uh, but it's good to have that in writing and have um, have some more detailed explanation of some of these these aspects so you can access that through the handouts tab on your uh, webinar 
as well as the retirement by the ages um, handout that has key dates and deadlines as you approach retirement. So that also has some key uh, information about um, Social Security and Medicare deadlines. For instance, um, you may not be aware that there's a window of just seven months that you need to apply for your Medicare benefits uh, starting three months prior to the month of your 65th birthday. So uh, it, it's important to keep in mind some of those dates and the retirement by the ages handout uh, can help to, uh, to keep those dates uh, front of mind for you as you enter into retirement. So I'd encourage you to, to take a look at both of those handouts. In addition to that, there are lots of helpful resources on the MERS website, mersofmich.com slash retiree, or you can simply click the retiree tab at the top of the page. And it's essentially a landing page where we put links to all of the different resources throughout the MERS website that would be particularly relevant or useful to you as, a, as someone approaching retirement. We also have recently launched our uh, Sensibility blog, which is all produced in-house, um, and it's got some great information about various retirement-related topics, um, also some more broad uh, information on uh, financial wellness and uh, taking steps to, to prepare for retirement as well. Uh, so I'd encourage you to take a look at our Sensibility blog and find some of those resources that you may find helpful as you plan for retirement. In addition to that, we're doing more and more every day with webinars and other use of online uh, technology to help get uh, information to you, our participants. So uh, in July, on July 31st, we've got an upcoming webinar called Managing and Monitoring Your Investments. So if you, and that is part of our, our year-long investment series. Um, so if you have uh, products like a 457 program, or maybe you've, you've got a defined benefit plan and also um, a 401k or defined contribution from a different time in your career, then that could be a very uh, helpful webinar for you to attend. Also in September on the 20th, we'll, we'll have a webinar on healthcare in retirement, and we're, we'll have some information on our newly launching um, MERS online uh, marketplace where we partner with the Mercer um, uh, team to provide uh, some options for healthcare in retirement. Um, and then also on October 12th, we've got a webinar on using your retirement account, uh, par also part of our uh, year-long investment series. And all of our past webinars are also listed on, on the website. So if, if you uh, are looking for more information on any of these topics, we may have already conducted a webinar on, on some topics that you might find relevant. And then finally, on November 5th, we've got a webinar on Social Security. We also recently did a Facebook Live event with a representative from Social Security, and you can find that on our Facebook page. Um, in addition to that, we've got pizza and planning events in the evenings that we invite you to attend. When there's one in your area, we'll notify you through your employer, but you can also find a full list of dates and times on the MERS website. Our third quarter topic will be healthcare and retirement, and then fourth quarter topic will be the defined benefit retirement process with information on Social Security and Medicare. So that goes a little bit deeper into those uh, other programs, Social Security and Medicare, than the webinar you attended today. In addition to that, we're on all of the social media platforms. So if you have not yet um, followed us or liked us on any of those platforms, uh, those, that's a great way to get access to MERS resources, have a um, direct line to ask questions or things like that. Um, so if Facebook or Twitter is a way that you get your news, then um, we'd encourage you to check us out on those platforms. You also have all of our contact information listed on the screen there. Um, our service center does a great job uh, walking through the retirement application with participants or answering any other questions that you may have about your benefits. So uh, they are open 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday, and they're happy to help. So I'd encourage you to um, utilize that as well, as well as our website, MERSofMish.com. So I'm taking a look to see if there's additional questions here.
Um, and we will, a reminder, if you have personal questions, we'll follow up with you individually to get you the answer um, when we can go a little bit more in depth on your individual situation. So uh, we will be following up with some of you on some individual questions. We thank you all for attending the webinar and um, hope you found some useful information. Um, and thank you again for bearing with us with those technical difficulties at the beginning. But thanks so much for attending and have a wonderful day.